All right, this is unit 2.1. In 2.1, we're starting in unit 2 to work with quadratics. We work most, most of our stuff with linear, and we work with absolute value, but today we're going to start working with quadratics, is which when you get a variable x and you square it. Okay, so that would be a quadratic when it's to the second power. So just to show you this, it ties exactly in with what we were just doing. Our parent function, again, is f of x equals x squared. But if you can... When you look at a quadratic, so we've got all these functions with x squareds in it, it works just like it did with linear functions. Here we have a negative x minus 2. Well, remember, if it's inside, it's horizontal, just like it was with absolute value. So that's going to send it 2 to the right, and it's going to reflect it over. And so if we look at these graphs, this one is right 2, and it's flipped over, okay? This one is right 2 and up 2, and it's positive, so it still opens up. So if we go right 2 and up 2, that would be C. If we look at the third one, it's left 2 and down 2, and it's flipped over. So again, it's all the same. We go left 2, down 2, and it's turned upside down. This one has a 0.5. Remember, that's a horizontal or a vertical shrink which compresses it so it gets wider it is right to and down to so if we go right to and down to and you can see it's wider than these other, than this graph was and so that is a uh, that would match D and if we look at this one this is a vertical stretch of two so it's going to get thinner and it's going to be right to and so that's this one you can see this one's thinner than this one where this one was wider than that one and then the last one would be left to and up to and opening down, and so that would have to be E. So you can see this is all exactly the same as what we did when we did absolute value with linear functions. It works the exact same way when we go to quadratics. So our objectives for 2.1, our students would be, would be able to describe quadratic functions and students will the right transformations of quadratics, which we went through. And as you'll see, nothing changes on this from what we did linear. So a quadratic function. A quadratic function is a function that can be written in the form of f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where a is not equal to 0, because if a was 0, that would make this whole thing 0, and then you wouldn't have a quadratic anymore. And the graph of a quadratic is a parabola. So a parabola. Anytime we have a quadratic, it would look like this, or it could open down if it was reflected over the x-axis. So those are the graphs. All our graphs are going to be this U-shape or flipped over. So transformations. I don't want to. Hopefully, this makes sense because nothing has changed from what we did before. Transformations of f of x equals x squared. Again, your parent function is your simplest function of a quadratic, so that would just be x squared. Again, this A is our vertical stretch or shrink. This A is our horizontal stretch or shrink. H is our movement left or right, and K is our movement up and down. Remember, the keys are verticals outside, and it stays with what it is. Stretches and shrinks are multiplication. Vertical slides up and down or horizontal slides left and right are either addition subtraction. And again, if it's horizontal, it's always the inverse of what it says. So if it's h, it's a, the opposite of that. And a is the reciprocal of what it says. So the a value, if the value of a is in front of the, the parentheses, then uh, it's vertical because it's outside. If a is negative, it's a vertical reflection, it flips over. If A is greater than 1, vertical stretch. And if A is between 0 and 1, vertical shrink. Remember, you don't worry about the negative sign in front. That's the reflection part. You just worry about the value of A. If the A value is on the inside of the parentheses, then it's horizontal. So then because it's horizontal, it's the inverse. So the multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal. So if it says 3x squared, then our A is one-third, because it has to be the reciprocal of what it says. If it was two-thirds x squared, then it would be uh, three-halves would be our a. And so that would be a horizontal stretch, where this would be a horizontal shrink. 
If A is negative, it's a horizontal reflection, so over the y-axis, left and right. If the inverse of A is greater than 1, then it's a horizontal stretch. And if the inverse of A is between greater than 0 but less than 1, or between that, then it's a horizontal shrink. So all of this is the exact same thing we did with absolute value. Same thing with our H value. Remember, H occurs inside the parentheses. If it's inside, it's a horizontal translation, which is the additive inverse of our opposite of what it says, and it moves left and right. K, remember, is vertical, and so that's a vertical translation, which is up or down. So again, all these transformations, exactly the same thing as what we just did with absolute value. So if we look at example page 48, So on page 48, they've got a nice chart here for the, the core concept, what the horizontal translations and the vertical translations do of the graph. But if we look at example one, it says describe the transformations of f of x equals x squared represented by g of x equals x plus 4 squared minus 1. So remember, just take one thing at a time. There's nothing in front, so it's not reflected, and it's not vertically stretched or shrink. There's nothing to the A inside, but we do have this plus 4. And that's inside, so it's horizontal, and it's the inverse. So that's going to send the graph. This is our parent function. It's going to send it 4 to the left, which is here. And then minus 1 is vertical because it's outside. We go down 1, and it opens up. Now, one thing on this, if you go to your parent function, y equals x squared, and if I were to make a chart, So if I put in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So you can see those points. We've got 0, 0. We've got 1, 1. Negative 1, 1. And 2, 4. And negative 2, 4. So those points are like that. Something you can remember so you don't have to make a chart for these, it always... If, as long as a is 1, the graph stays the same. So if I go here, this just becomes my 0, 0. And just like this, I went over 1, up 1. We go over 1, up 1 to get the next point. And over 1, left 1 to get the next point. And then for the next point, just like it is here, you go over 2, up 4. So that would be over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4 to get to that next point. And same thing on that side. So you can use this 1 and 4 to go from the vertex to draw all your graphs. As that A value changes, all you have to do is if we had, if this had a 2 in front, 2x plus 4 squared minus 1, we would still go to here. Let's go green. The vertex would still be there, but now I would just multiply these. 1 and 4 values by the A value. So I, if I multiply by 2, that would be over 1, up 2, and left 1, up 2. And then over 2, 2 times 4 is 8. And so I would go over 2 and up 8. And over 2, up 8. And so that would be a skinnier graph like that. You can always make a table, but it's kind of nice to use that A value, and all you have to do is remember 1 and 4 and multiply the A value by that. So what I'd like you to do now is to pause the video and do numbers 1, 2, and 3. So they want you to describe the transformation x squared the trans, excuse me, describe the transformation of x squared equal, f of x equals x squared represented by g. Then graph each function. So these graphs don't have to be perfect. Just do it freehand as you go ahead and graph those. But go ahead and pause the video. Do these, again, you're going to do these on your uh, note paper that you're going to show me. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video, do those three, and then you can come back and see how you did on those. So when you were doing this one, I'll just do these graphs on this here. 
This would be, and since it's x minus 3, that's horizontal, so it would be the opposite. It would go 3 to the right. And so I'm going to go here from the parent function. I'm going to go 3 to the right, which is going to put it here. And then again, I can just use those a values. Remember, we're going to use 1 and 4. So a is 1, so 1 times 1 is 1, so I go over 1, up 1, and left 1. And that's going to be about there. And then I'm going to go over 2, up 4. So approximately there, and over 2, and up 4. And so your graph should look like this. So that's what your graph should look like on that one. And the transformation would just be 3 to the right. This transformation, it's minus 2, so that's going to be right 2 and down 2. And it's still positive, so it's staying the same way. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go right 2 and down 2. So that's going to be approximately there. My A value is still 1, so I'm going to go over 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, and then over 2, up 4, and over 2, up 4, and so my graph looks approximately like that for the second one. And then the last one is left 5 and up 1, so I'm going to go left 5. And I'm going to go, excuse me, up one. So that's going to put my vertex right there. And then again, my A value is one. So I go over one, up one. Left one, up one. Over two, up four. And over two, up four. And so my graph would look something like that. Now, I always use, I just take A times one and A times four to get my values. But you can always, if you want, you can make a chart. You know where your vertex is. Your vertex is at negative 5 and 1. So if you can't remember using the A value, you just have to plug in numbers. So if I plug in negative 7, negative 7 plus 5 is 2. 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. Now remember, it's symmetrical, so this would have to be 5. And if I plug in negative 6, negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. And you can see I've got those points at negative 5, we're at 1. At negative 4, we're at 2. At negative 3, we're at 5. And the same thing that way. So you can always make tables. It's just a lot shorter if you use that A value. So again, in the textbook, they have a nice description here showing the reflections and the horizontal stretches and shrinks that we went over in the notes. So now they're going to add that on our transformations. So if you look at example two, it says describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared represented by g, then graph each function. Now this doesn't have parentheses, but the x squared would be the same as if I wrote it that way. So this negative one half occurs outside so remember the negative sign is outside, so that's vertical reflection. So we have a vertical reflection. Or you can say it reflects on the x-axis either way. And then 1 half, remember if it's multiplied, it's a stretch or shrink. Since it's less than 1, it's a, and it's outside, so it's vertical. So that would be a vertical shrink. And try and put what it's up. So that's a vertical shrink of 1 half. So they go through and tell that, and so then the graph. Now let's look at, again, using that 1 and 4 value. So A is 1 half, so 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So I go from this, and because A is actually a negative 1 half, negative 1 half times 1 is a negative 1 half, and negative 1 half times 4 is a negative 2. So I'm at, the vertex didn't change, but I go over 1 down a half and then left one and down a half. Sorry about that. It's not for making these. And then over two and we're down two. So over two, down two. And over two, down two. And so we have our graph. All right, which got a little bit wider. If we go to the next one, now that two, so let's look at number two, the B. The 2 is inside, so that is, again, it's multiplied, so it's horizontal. But remember, when it's 
horizontal, it's the inverse of what it says, so the inverse of 2 would be 1 half for the reciprocal. And so that would be a horizontal shrink of 1 half. And then it would be up 1. So, so you can see here the graph, the vertex didn't change, but it was, it's just up 1. But now we got a horizontal shrink, which is going to squeeze that, and it's going to make it thinner. So it's a little bit harder to graph these because you kind of have to make the chart. So our vertex is, we'll start with our vertex, which is at 0, 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1. 1 squared is 2, or 1 times 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. So remember, it's got to be symmetrical. So if this is 5, the one the same distance has to be 5. If we plug in 2, 2 times 4 is or 2 times 2 is 4, squared is 16, plus 1 is 17. So you can see that this is going to get thinner. And so at 0, we're at 1. At 1, we're at 5. And that's enough that we can get our graph. We can see that that's thinner. So you kind of have to make the chart when it's horizontal. Or you can simplify it, because this would become 4x squared plus 1. And so that would be a vertical stretch of 4. And if we go back to our 1, 4, 4 times 1 would be 4. So over 1, up 4 gets us to the spot, both sides. And then remember, 4 times uh, 4, 4 would be 16. And so that would be over 2, up 16, which takes us off the graph. Now, vertex form. Vertex form is the exact same thing as when we did it with absolute value. Except A is not the slope anymore, although it does tell us by multiplying by A how our graph goes. So remember with our absolute value, our vertex was HK, and our A was our slope. So now if we take a look at vertex form of a quadratic, our vertex stays the same thing. It's HK. So our vertex is HK. And again, we can make the chart. So let's look at example number three on page 50. So again, we've gone through the transformation stuff. But if we look at example number three, it says, let the graph of G be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and a, vert and a reflection in the x-axis, followed by a translation three units down of the graph of f of x equals x squared. So again, they're just asking you to write the rule and identify the vertex. So again, if we start with our original x squared, so it says let the graph be of g be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So we're going to multiply the whole thing by 2. Then we're going to reflect it in the x-axis. Now remember, the x-axis runs this way, so when I reflect in it, it goes up and down, so that's vertical. So this is the vertical stretch of 2. The reflection in the x-axis makes me put a negative sign out front. And then we're going to finish with 3 units down, which again is vertical, so that is what it says it is, so it goes outside. They said let this be g of x, and so that would be our transformation. Then they ask you to tell what the vertex is. So remember, I don't need these parentheses, but there is nothing added or subtracted to h. And so our vertex, remember, is hk. And so in this case, it would be 0, negative 3. And we don't have to graph it. So now, I'd like, uh, let's go example 4. Number 4 says, writing the transformed quadratic function. Let the graph of G be a translation, 3 units right and 2 units up, followed by a reflection in the y-axis of the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 5x. So, let's, you take it one step at a time. So we're going to go a translation, 3 units to the right. Now here you have to be careful, because remember, it only affects x, but we have two x's. So every time I come to x, I'm going to put parentheses. 3 units right, remember if it's horizontal, it's the inverse of what it says. So minus 3 squared minus 5 times x minus 3. 
followed by a transformation two units up. So that would be, let's do that in a different color, two units up would be plus two. And then it says a reflection in the y-axis. Now remember your y-axis runs vertically, so in that would be horizontal. So remember that only affects the x. So we'll go here, and every time I come to x, I'm going to have to put a negative sign in front of that. Okay? And so this, now I'm going to go ahead and, on a test, let you leave it there. Right now they are simplifying this, so they're taking that x minus 3, squared, so you have to multiply that out. And so what they did was they foiled this. So negative x times negative x is a positive x squared. And then you get a negative x times a negative 3 would be a positive 3x. And negative 3 times a negative x is another positive 3x. And then negative 3 times 3 is a positive 9. And then they did and distributed this negative 5. So negative 5 times negative x is a positive 5x. And a negative 5 times a negative 3 is a positive 15. Plus 2, and then they simplified that. So there are no other x squareds. So that's where the x squared came from. And then they had... Oh. So what the book did on this was they, they did just the first steps and then they did the reflection. I would do it this way. It's not going to make a difference. You'll see we get the same thing. They got this and then they put the negative sign in with the x's and so they got x squared, 11x, and 26, which is what we're going to get when we work this out. So we have 3x plus 3x plus 5x, so that would be 6 plus 5 is 11x. So we, they have the x squared, we have the 11x. And then we have the 9 plus 15 is 24 plus 2 is 26. So you can see we got the same thing here. They did it in two steps. I would just do it in one and do it this way. But it doesn't make any difference. You can, they simplified this before they did the reflection, then they did the reflection. But you can see we got the exact same answer by waiting and doing it by doing it first and then calculating it out. So, then if you'll look at example number five. All right, so let's look at example number five, modeling with mathematics. So it says the height, h, and feet of water spray from a fire hose can be modeled by the function h of x equals negative 0.03x squared plus x plus 25, where x is the horizontal distance in feet from the fire truck. The crew raises the ladder so that the water hits the ground 10 feet farther out from the fire truck. Write a function that models the new path of the water. So they kind of walk you through this. It says, understand the problem. You are given a function that represents the path of the water spraying from a fire hose. You're asked to write a function that represents the path of the water after the crew raises the ladder. So if we raise it vertically. It says, make a plan, analyze the graph of the function, determine the translation of the ladder that causes the water to travel 10 feet further, then write the function. So, to do this, we're going to use the Desmos apps. So if we go to the Desmos calculator, I've put that equation in, and you can see that this graph, if you just press on the point, it crosses, at 50 feet out is when the height of the water is at zero. So it hits the ground 50 feet from the fire truck. So the fire truck's up here, it's already 25 feet high, okay? So 10 feet further out would be when is this going to hit 60? And so, so we want to know when it's at 60, and it is, you can just kind of trace along here. There, 60 feet, it's negative 23. So that means I have to elevate this 23 feet to find the right height. So if I add 23 to this, my equation is going to be 0.03x squared plus x plus 48. And so if we go back to the big ideas, you can see that they added 23 feet to the elevation, and that's going to kick it out so that it gets to that 60-foot mark. 
So now what I'd like you to do is to try, go ahead and pause the video and try 7, 8, and 9 on here to see if you can get um, the answers to these and then come back, check and see how you did. All right, so the first one, 7, let the graph of G be a vertical shrink by a factor of 1 half. So vertical tells us that it goes outside. It says followed by a translation 2 units up to the graph of f of x equals x squared. So we're with the parent function. You can just write that here. Um, you've got f of x. So we're going to do a vertical shrink. So that means I multiply the whole thing by 1 half. Followed by a translation 2 units up. Now you could put that x squared in parentheses, but you don't need Actually, we... You know, if you wanted, you can, because the square is outside the parentheses, we just don't need it when there's no h. And so either way, they're going to write it this way, 1 half x squared plus 2. Uh, and now when we go to the next one, it says, let the graph of g be a translation 4 units left. And now we've got x squared plus x. So remember, 4 units left is horizontal, so it just affects the x. So remember, I have to go ahead and do this. And every time I come to x, I have to subtract. Actually, it would be plus because it's to the left, so opposite that. So x plus 4. And then followed by a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 third. So again, we have to do the reciprocal. And remember, it only affects the x. And for testing purposes, I would just leave it there. I don't know if on the textbook, sometimes they leave it this way, and sometimes you have to multiply it out. If you have to multiply it out, you just have to go. So I would have to FOIL this. And if you FOIL that, you would get 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 by going like that. And then you'd have to add 3x plus 4, so 9x squared, 24 plus 3 is 27x, and 16 plus 4 is 20. And so that would be our new function. Then on number 5, they want us to move it now 10 feet closer. So if I go back to the Desmos, and we want this now to be 10 feet closer, so we want it to hit at 40. And so you can see it again, if I can do this from here, it's easier from the computer. So you can see, I want to know when this is at 40. So at 40, it's 17 feet. So I would have to lower that 17 feet. So going back to that 25, I'd have to subtract 17 from it. And so that would be 0.03x squared plus x plus 8. So I'd have to lower that 17 feet to get my value. So, we did the 7 through 9. Uh, your assignment is on page 52 and 53. Again, this will be on the uh, computer for uh, your Google Classroom. Uh, and then on the Big Ideas map. So, hopefully this made sense and you'll be fine with it.